Hey, what's up everybody? Carpo here. I was just thinking, they say in science that if you cannot measure something, it does not exist. And um, I was just looking a little deeper into that and finding some interesting ideas about, uh, um, well, about science in general and the paradigms within science that, um, that hold us back from, from our true nature. Um, and you cannot prove a negative is one of the funniest things you'll hear. Um, you cannot prove something's not true. And that's kind of a fundamental part of science. Um, and often, you know, people will try to prove scientifically that something um, ethereal or something spiritual is actually physical or uh, an emotional state or a mental thing. But still it can never be proven 100%. And now we arrive at this other issue, which is the fact that not only can you not prove something doesn't exist, but now we've developed quantum mechanics, and quantum mechanics tells us that things are unpredictable, and that nothing is stable, and that the intention of the observer affects the outcome of the experiment. So with that in mind, can anything really ever be proven? Ever? I mean, with total certainty. And a true scientist will take the approach of, no, you cannot prove something 100%. It's, it's impossible. But you can do the best you can and do repeated experiments. The problem is that experiments that are being done today have been carried out under different intentions and had different results. So, I'm not bashing science. And I try not to bash any, you know, anything that helps us to move forward in our knowledge. But... The truth is that uh, people are defending science, like, unconditionally. I mean, they say anybody who doesn't believe, uh, you know, in the scientific method is a fool, and they call everybody else pseudoscientists. And uh, uh, Rupert Sheldrake was a good example, because I was watching a couple of his videos, and that's why I made this. I noticed the comments, people saying, oh, he's pseudoscience, none of, nothing, none of his studies can be proven. And uh, so I looked into his studies, and uh, they can be proven to an extent only to the extent any scientific evidence can be proven. But if something doesn't fit with the current paradigm and the current belief system, it's thrown out. So all I want to say is that a scientist, a true scientist, should enter his job site and leave his opinions, ideals, and biases at the door. And that's only possible if it's funded 100% by impartial people which it's not. Most scientific experiments are funded by groups that want a certain outcome. So the intention of these groups is to have a certain outcome. The intention of the scientists is to try to provide the outcome that these people want, and the outcome is. So um, if anybody's interested, look at the intention experiments that they do. There's some really interesting ones, you know, where a group of people have a certain intention. But um, I know people will say that, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about, or that, you know, it's still pseudoscience. I just want to know how a group of people can affect the outcome of a random number generator. I don't know. And uh, the fact is that it's been repeated over and over, where a group of people or a person will focus on a random number generator. Um, quantum non locality says that it doesn't matter how far apart you're separated. Um, this is how long distance healing is done, faith healing, stuff like that. So, uh, just some things to think about. and. Um, Look into the intention experiments, and you'll see what I mean, that science is, science is based on the intent of the observer. So, let's start some good intentions behind our observations, right? Namaste.